Last week, the African Studies Association of the West Indies, Asawi, sponsored a seminar on Jamaica's first national hero, Marcus Garvey, and the meaning of Garveyism in the modern world. On balance, it was not a seminar of which Asawi, as a body of responsible scholars, can be altogether proud. Too much of it was conducted in an atmosphere of emotionalism that would have been better suited to veranda conversation than to a conference. Solid work that should have been discussed and assessed was too often lost in a lot of talk that led nowhere and that cast no, no, no new light on a very important man. With a few honorable exceptions, too many of the papers were ill-prepared and badly presented. And the real significance of Marcus Garvey as a political figure was drowned in a flood of sentimentality and confused thinking that made the great man less than he was and that did not give him his true place in the history of our time. Let us be clear, Marcus Garvey was a politician of magnificent courage, of vision that was as close to genius as any polit politician could wish to possess, but he was not a saint or a prophet. He was a man. A black man who inspired a lot of other black men to seize and hold positions of dignity and power in their societies. He made mistakes. He was perhaps born a generation too soon to see his plans materialize fully. He was betrayed by some of the people with whom he had to work in the sort of world he had to work in. But he had the kind of boldness and originality that make him a far more important figure than the sort of gospel writer into which so many of his so-called disciples are trying to turn him. What he did was to begin, but only begin, the concept of the black man in the new world claiming his right as a man and as a citizen. This alone is a tremendous achievement. It inspired some leaders but it did not make mass appeal in Africa where the political realities of tribe against tribe, nation against nation, sometimes appear to be increasing rather than decreasing. The nonsense that was too frequently uttered at the Asawi conference last week about Africa's exiled children returning to Africans, Africa's millions of uncultivated square miles is dangerous nonsense. Nobody in Africa has invited the descendants of Africans to return as colonists and settlers. And any person of African descent who thinks he can go back as of right, unless he has a skill, had better think twice. A black man from outside Africa is welcome as a temporary worker or as a tourist. He is no more welcome as a settler than a white American would be in Europe. Then there is the equal nonsense that was talked last week about Africans in the New World going back to find their African God. What God? The God of the 11 million African Muslims or the God of the Ethiopian Coptics who constitute the oldest Christian church or Mamvulu Vulu at the mouth of the Congo who is the god of rain and storm. And in which tribes or nations will our mass repatriated, repatriated Africans claim a place among the Ashanti, the Igbo, the Fon, the Baluba, the Kikuyu? They will have to prove their credentials and they had better believe that trying to establish those credentials would be a very difficult business indeed and without such credentials, they would have no place or position or vote. They would be aliens. Africa belongs to the Africans. And there are many Africas to which the black people of the New World have no more claim than the blondest, bluest-eyed New Englander from Vermont. 
Marcus Garvey did a great thing in encouraging the black people of this continent into asserting their influence and establishing themselves as men and women with equal rights. He did an equally great thing when he inspired some of the leaders of the battered, exploited people of Africa into a realization of how badly they had been taken by colonists from outside. Let us not dishonor his achievement by pretending that the descendants of Africa in the New World owe any allegiance to one god, one king, one race, or one territory in the African continent. If we do that, we make the contribution of a remarkable man sound a little foolish. And heaven knows Marcus Garvey was no fool. He was, in his fashion, as important to what the people of the Americas are trying to build in the new world as was George Washington and Simon Bolivar.